I know I had just got used to what it was last week to change to something. That's okay. All right, can the other side see a worksheet? Do you see the worksheet? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. yes. Perfect. Y'all can see the worksheet. We're good to go. Now, here's the test. Let's see if the help desk got me fixed up. <laughs> Okay, can the other side still see my worksheet? Yeah, yeah. And you can still hear me, obviously. All right. Now the test. When I click on this little pin up here on this modi. Okay. There it is. When I click on <laughs> this is not gonna be good. When I click on this pin on oh, they did not fix it. Hmm. I can't even write on this. They don't have any meetings. Please don't record this. This is almost enough to send you into retirement. Okay, I'm really depending on you folks on the other side because I'm going to have to use this middle board. And if you can't see it, you're going to have to you know, speak up and let me know. I'm going to have to use somebody's notebook. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm going to use Okay. The first problem. Can the other side see this? Yes. Okay, good. The ordered pair 5 8. I had taught like this in 25 years on board. Okay, so determine the six straight function for an angle that passes through that point. So you could plot that point, 5H, draw your ray through it, drop your perpendicular. This is your X, this is your Y. So this would be a 5, this would be an 8. And of course, you can find the R by doing x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So 25 plus 64 equals r squared. So the R is the square root of 89. Okay. 
And you are in the first quadrant, so your X is positive, your Y is positive, and your R is always positive. So now that you know what your X, your Y, and your R is, you can go through and do your six trig functions. Because the sine of that angle would have been 8 over the square root of 89, which rationalizes to 8 square root of 89 over 89. And then the cosecant is the reciprocal. All right, cosine, x over r, 5 over the square root of 89, and then rationalize it. Secant, reciprocal, And what's left? Tan and cotan. So tan is y over x. That would be 8 over 5. Cotan is 5 over 8. And I read, this is why I don't like this because this side's having trouble seeing it. You can't see through me. That's why this thing is better. I feel like a, a, a student that came in and didn't know there was a test today. I am completely unprepared, it looks like. So, doing the best I can. But sometimes it's all good. All right, we can do the same thing with the number two, which is the negative three seven. I'm going to show you a little bit different way that you. Can um, I need to write down the. Those real quick. Does anything work right in the room? Can you see the red? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Are we good now? Can I go with this one? All right. What I'm going to do here is X is negative 3, Y is 7. I'm not even going to draw a picture, but you can. You can do it just like I did the first one. But I can find my R just knowing that that's X and Y. And negative 3 squared is 9. Y squared is 49. So my R is the square root of 58. And I'm going to use my sine, cosine, tan over here and the reciprocals to fill it in. And what would be the sine? Seven over square root of 58. So that's going to be square root of 58 over 58. The reciprocal of that is going to be square root of 58 over 7. The cosine is x over r. And I'm going to go ahead and rationalize. So negative 3 square root of 58 over 58. My secant is r over x, which is just the reciprocal. So square root, negative square root of 58 over 3. Doesn't matter if it's negative with the top or the bottom. Just have it there. Tan is y over x. And cotan is x over y. Are there any questions there? The only difference was I didn't draw the picture. But you pick the way you like to do it. And that's fine. Okay, looking at the next two. And y'all may say, why is she using the whole board? This is the board that they can see. So, tan theta equals 3, 4. And <coughs> theta is in quadrant 3. Now, the other side, y'all speak up if you can't see something. All right, looking at this. Theta is in quadrant three. I'm going to draw a picture. I did not have to, but I'm going to. I kind of like the pictures. And my tan is y over x. So that tells me to make that vertical line three, the horizontal line four, and this is a three, four, five triangle. I told you there's a couple of triangles that you just want to know so you don't have to confuse 
that miss the side. Three, four, five, and five, twelve, thirteen are the two that I'm talking about. Now, when I did that, there's something that's still missing. I'm in quadrant three. Shouldn't the X be negative? And shouldn't the Y be negative? Now, I know they were positive here, but isn't two negatives a positive? So that's where that comes from. All right, so I can go ahead and get my reciprocal of cotan. Just flip that over to get four thirds. I've got sine, cosecant, cosine, and secant left. So the sine would be y over r, which is a negative three fifths. My cosecant's the reciprocal. Cosine's x over r, and secant is r over x. Now, you did not have to draw that picture. You could have said, you know, X is four, Y is three, but when you're in quadrant three, both of those have to be negative, but I thought the picture was beneficial. Okay, number four. Okay, so sine theta equals a negative two fifths. Okay, I'm going to do this one without drawing the picture. I like the picture, so you feel free to draw that picture. I do like the pictures, but I just want to show you, you know, how you could avoid that. You're going to need to know X, Y, and R. If this is cosine, it's X over R. So there's the negative 2, your R is 5. In quadrant two, X is negative, but Y is positive, okay? Now I've got to find that Y. We've been having X and Y given to us, and we have to find R. But now I've got to find the Y. So you want to have X squared, which is 4, plus the Y squared, equals 25. So Y squared is 21, square rooted. Now Y can be negative. But since I'm in quadrant two, I do want the positive. To me, when you do the picture, it's a little bit more visual to know where you, whether you have to have negatives or positives. Okay, no sign they gave me. Where did you get the 25? This 25? Yes, ma'am. I squared the R. Okay. X squared. Plus y squared, I don't have it yet, that's what I'm looking for, equals the r squared. Does that help? Did that help? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, see if me. All right, sign thing. What is that? Square root 21 over 5. Thank you. Alexis, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. My cosecant is 5 times the square root of 21 over 21. Way to go. What else we got left? 10 and cotan? What's 10? Square root of And I think I shared with y'all the other day. I think my math lab is going to take the negative top or bottom and give you credit. If you put it in the bottom and it don't give you credit, put it at the top. What's the first one you have up there? The negative over here? That's second. Okay. Second. I can't, we can't see the um, values on the right. They're off screen. I'm going to get them on the screen. Right. Did I go the wrong way? The other direction. There you go. There you go. Okay. And that's going to be negative 2 square root of 21 over 21. Okay. Scroll on down. Okay, so when we look at this, I'm trying to get this center back up. Can y'all see that pretty clear? On the, out, on the other side? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
I'll leave it there again. We are now going to look at something that's called quadrantal angles. And what those are, are angles that you can't draw a perpendicular and make a triangle. So we're looking at going around the quadrantals. This is at zero degrees. This is 180. Uh, 90, maybe. Felipe, you can send me that YouTube link if you want to. I'm not sending it out today. 180 degrees. 270. And then back to 360. So what we're wanting to do is find out what's the sine, cosine, rest of the trig functions of those angles. Well, what we just got through with, you could do X, Y, and R. Well, when you look at this, there's not a triangle where you have that. That's why you had to learn those trig functions in terms of X, Y, and R. So we're going to start here. Now that coordinate is many different things. I can do one zero, I can do five zero, I can do eight zero, I can do 999 zero. We're going to use the smallest whole numbers. So we're going to use one zero. Where this is my X, this is my Y, so what will my R be? X squared is 1 plus 0 equals R squared, so it's going to be 1. And I've got this chart, and it's going to be beneficial for you if I have it just like how they have it. Across the top here, what did they start with? 90, 90 degrees. Then they're going to have 180, 270, and I'm back to 360, which is the same as zero. zero. They're coterminal. Okay, so I'm actually starting on that far right. Sine is y over r. Y is zero, r is one, so what is sine? Zero. Let's go ahead and do cosecant. Here, it's the reciprocal. So what's the reciprocal of zero? Undefined. Now instead of writing it out undefined, I'm going to put ND. Not defined. All right, cosine is X over R. So what is that? One. One. So secant is also one. All right, tan is y over x. That's going to be 0 over 1, which is 0. So cotan is the reciprocal of that, which is undefined. Perfect. Now that worked great. We can do the same thing at 90 degrees. And that ordered pair is 0, 1. So x is 0, y is 1, and r is always going to be 1 on the quadrants. And that's what we're looking at. Okay, sine of 90. 1. So the cosecant would be 1. Cosine of 90. Cosine, x over r. 0. So secant would be undefined. Tan is y over x, that is. One over zero, so that's zero on the bottom is undefined. Why is this one harder than the first one? And cotan would be zero. You're doing the same thing all the way around. It's now at 180 degrees. My ordered pair is negative 1, 0. There's your x, there's your y, and r is 1. So what is the sign? 0. So cosecant would be empty. Empty. Cosine is x over r. That is negative 1. 
So secant, the reciprocal is negative one. Tan. Zero. So your cotan is unsigned. Okay, the last one here, what's the order pair? Zero, negative one. And I'm going to have a few comments to make when we get this last part filled. All right, so what would my sign be? Negative one. My cosine? Zero. Oh, I should have came down here to the cosine. It is negative. All right, cosine is zero. So secant is tan is. So cotan is. All right, some of you are checking or catching on, and you're getting it pretty quick. But that's how I would come up with them. Now I think I shared with you early on that that well, there was a lot of memorization, but I was going to try to give you things to base it on, so it wouldn't be just rote memorization. That's what this is based on. If you can remember those four order pairs and then your ratios of x, y, and r, then you see why we had to do x, y, and r and we couldn't do opposite adjacent and hypotenuse? There wasn't a triangle, was there? That's why you had to do x, y, r. All right, I do want to take a couple of notes on this to point out. If I was looking at that and you said, I don't like one zero. Why didn't you use the ordered pair four zero? Okay, we'll use four zero. What's my R now? It's not one. It's going to be four. Then you're going to have to simplify. So now I'm looking at the last column. Sine would be zero over four, which is just zero, so the reciprocal is undefined. Cosine would be four over four, which equals so you just have to reduce. So if you just start with the smallest number to start off with, you don't have to reduce it. So that's that. If you start with the smallest number, then why don't we do decimals? What do you? Uh, I should have said smallest integer number. Integer. How about that? You can do decimals. If you wanted to do that as 0.25, this would be 0.25, but you'd still have to reduce, wouldn't you? 0.25 over 0.25. Okay. One is the best thing to use. All right. Another thing that I just want to share with you that can make things a little quicker for you. Not necessary. This is good. If you can do this, you're good. But here's something that some of you may want to kind of tap into here. If I'm looking at the sine of an angle, we know that that is y over r, don't we? If I'm looking at quadrantals, we know that that R is 1. And we're just talking about quadrantals. We're not talking about 30, 60, 45. We're talking 0, 90, 180, 270. If this is the case, wouldn't my sign just equal whatever my Y value is? So quickly, and this is why I always do sine of 90 is 1. Sine of 270 is negative 1. I know it's the y coordinate. The sine of zero should be zero, was it? The sine of 90 should be one, was it? The sine of 180 should be zero, was it? The sine of 270 should be. Okay, so if you just think about it in terms of you know what your y values are on the quadrants, can I do the same thing with my cosine? But it's x over r. So what should that equal if it's a quadrantal? It should be your x coordinate. So that's just kind of a quick way that you can come up with it sometimes. I would do this. When I got my test paper, whatever day we have a test on, when I got my test paper, I'd write that down. So I know that that's what I was going to base those on. Okay. Good. All right, these reciprocal identities, and we've actually filled out some things that you would have on that basic fact sheet that you can fill in at your leisure. All right, so looking at this, reciprocal identities, we talked about them because you told me at least two dozen times almost today that the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. 
So sine theta would equal one over cosecant theta. Cosecant theta would equal one over sine theta. Is my cosine next? Cosine theta would equal 1 over secant. Secant would equal 1 over. You know, sometime along the way, you're going to be expected to be able to tell me what these formulas are. And tan is 1 over cotan, good, theta. And cotan theta is 1 over tan theta. So those are those reciprocal identities. And then the first several problems, they're so easy, and I'm glad. We use reciprocal identities to find the function value. So if you're looking at your worksheet, the first one says secant theta equals negative 2. And it says to find cosine theta. So what would that be? Negative 1 over 2. Perfect. Number two says that the tan of theta is 3 over 4. So if I do the cotan, what is that? Perfect. You don't have to draw a triangle. You don't have to find x, y, and r. You just flip it over. These identities that you memorize is to make things easier, not harder. Okay? Number three. If the sine of theta is one fourth, what is the cosecant? Four. Four. Okay, four and five. Four says cosecant is a square root of five. So what is the sine? Square root of five over five. Square root of five over five. Perfect. And on five, they tell me cotan of theta is negative six. So what is tan? Negative one over six. Perfect. So see how the reciprocal identities actually make things easy for you, or easier, I should say. Okay, the next part. These are some basic, I'll call them prereq skills, that we're going to be doing bigger problems, but you've got to be able to do this first, and you'll utilize it in a bigger problem. Okay, the first tells me that sine is greater than zero. So that means that sine is going to be positive. And the next one tells me that 10 theta is less than zero. So 10 is going to be negative. Okay, this is how I'm going to do it. Remember the all students take calculus. Okay. So sine being positive would be in what quadrant? One and two. Then both of these have got to be true. So you've got to figure out where the tan is negative. And that's going to be in two and four. So where did you have both of those true? And that's what you wanted. Number seven. So secant theta is less than zero, tan theta is greater than zero. All right, cosecant is less, negative, and what quadrants? Three and four. Tan being positive is in quadrants one and three. No, three and one, same thing, good. And so my answer here is going to be now, it is possible that you have two check marks and you might have more than one quadrant that those things are true in. And that's what we had there. So this was the answer and this was the answer. We are to 8, 9, 10, three. you try. So I'm going to give you about a minute.
quadrant or quadrants? Two. I mean, no, one. 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 Anybody agree? Okay. Number nine. One and two. Perfect. Number ten. One and four. Right. Any questions there? All right. The other said you tried, but we're going to do it together. On this first one, 205, what quadrant is that in? The third. So if that's in quadrant three, what's positive in quadrant three? All students take tan and cotan. So tan's positive. If it's not positive, it's negative. negative. So those two are negative. All right, 36 is in quadrant one. Everything's positive. Miss Ashmore. Yes. The screen went really blurry. It's not focused on the board. At all? No, ma'am. Oh, I can't no. read it. Just when I started this? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. That's better. Can y'all see that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I feel like the dust hit the Favorite. You know, the duck keeps walking back and forth, getting shot at. That's what I feel like right now. Okay. 135, what quadrant? Two. Sign, what's positive in quadrant two? Sign and go secant. All I did was sign and go sign tan. The other two are negative. 120, what quadrant? All right. That's the same thing, then, isn't it? Oh, that's a negative negative. 120. oh, is that a negative 120? Yes. Yeah. Right, so what quadrant is that in? Three. Three. A negative makes a difference. Tangent's positive in quadrant three, and the other two are negative. Negative 30 is in quadrant four, where cosine and secant are positive, so the other two are negative. Perfect. Okay, before I do these, if you'll go back to your fact sheet, back to the fact sheet, and we're actually looking at what range values the trigonometric functions have, range values. And I think a picture is worth a thousand words. And the first thing they want me to do is give the range values for sine or cosine. And sine and cosine are going to have the same range values. And I think it's going to help you to be able to learn these if you realize what a sine or a cosine curve looks like. And most of you probably know the sine curve, what, negative one to one. So let's look at that picture. Now I'm just going to draw, it may be a sine, it may be cosine, it doesn't matter. This is a sine curve, okay? And it does go down to negative one and up to positive one. So that's the y value. And by the way, this keeps going. I just drew one period. So that means that the sine of theta or cosine of theta can equal a negative half or a positive 0.3 or 1 or a 0.98, but it cannot equal 2 or negative 3. The sine range values for the range values for sine or cosine. There is no amplitude, there is no, those are translations, and that's going to be completely different. They're going to move. They're going to be translated. So, yes, that's correct. But we are dealing with just the basic function. So, now we're going to look at cosecant or secant. Now, if I were to graph that, that is the reciprocal of what I just got through with here. Where it was zero, remember when I did that chart, 
the reciprocal of zero is undefined. So those are where asymptotes are going to occur. Can you let me draw a picture? I'm glad you got it, but let me draw a picture. And then here's this. Now let's talk about why it's that negative one to infinity that way and that way, negative infinity. If I do the reciprocal of one, it's one. What's the reciprocal of a half? Two? So that's going to put me use on top of those curves. And yes, I could have just told you exactly what they were and said memorize it. But this should help you know why it's negative infinity to negative one. Union one to infinity. It's not in between. It says you set on top and below. Tan and cotan is the easiest. Okay, tell me what tan and cotan is. That's um, It's a uh, elongated S. It kind of looks like that. Or like that. Now, I know you've seen functions, especially if you've had pre-cal or college algebra, that this kind of looks like the x cubed function, doesn't it? It's not. x cubed keeps on going to the left and the right. It keeps going. This is actually bounded by asymptotes. Okay, but it does look like one. So that would be negative infinity to infinity. Okay. So that gave me the range values. Now we're just going to say whether things are possible or not. Then we're going to look at all of it, 16 through 23. I would take one like this, and I would just go through, and anything that was tan or cotan, I would say it was possible because everything works for tan and cotan. So let me number this. Is my board still in focus? The other side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so tan and cotan, that's going to be 19, 20, and 23. Those are possible. Okay, let's go back up. Let's do sine and cosine now. They have to be between and including negative 1 and 1. So is 16 possible? No, it's not possible. Number 21 is a sign. Is it possible? Yes, it was a 0.99. Cosine 22, negative square root of 3. Well, you know the square root of 1 is 1. So the square root of 3 is going to be higher than that, isn't it? So won't that be like a negative 1 point something? So is that possible? No. I never told exactly what square root of 3 was, but it didn't matter. I knew it was below that negative 1 there. 17 and 18 is left, secant and cosecant. Is 17 possible? Secant theta equals 4. Yes. Is it possible for cosecant theta equal negative 1 fourth? Negative 1 fourth. Okay. So what you got to do about is learn this, and that tells you the other. Okay, what we have left here is our Pythagorean identities. That's also in your fact sheet. <clears throat> and you can just memorize these Pythagorean identities, and that's fine. Do you see that your list, if you just memorize stuff, is getting pretty long? Well, you ain't seen nothing yet. Wait, do we get to unit three? That's the, that's the formula unit, unit three. So it's yet to come. But with these Pythagorean identities, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what they are. Sine squared A, data doesn't matter. Sine squared A, cosine squared A equals one. Tan squared A plus 1 equals secant squared A. And the third one, 
cotan squared A plus 1 equals cosecant squared A. That's the three. And you can just memorize them. Okay? But that, those are the Pythagorean identities. And the reason they're called Pythagorean identities is because you derive them from the Pythagorean identity or the Pythagorean formula. If I have x squared plus y squared equals r squared, isn't that Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus b squared equals c squared, but we're doing x by r. I can get this first one by dividing through by r squared. All right, what's x over r? Cosine squared. Then what's y over r? Sine squared. And r squared over r squared is? So that is the first one. I just did a commutative property of addition. I'm going to get another one by dividing through by Y squared, that's great. This is called deriving them. I'm not going to derive all of our formulas because some of them are just easier to memorize. This one was easy to derive, so it would help with memorization. X over Y is cotan. Y squared over Y squared is 1. R over Y is cosecant squared. So make sure you have the squares on it. And of course, how would I find the last one? Or actually the middle one. Divide through by. I did y squared. I did r squared. X squared. And that's going to give me 1 plus y over x is. Tan and squared, mm -hmm. and R over X is secant squared. Now usually, and I know this happens, usually when a teacher, especially a math teacher, derives a formula, you can just see students turning the volume off because they don't want to hear how to derive it. They're just going to memorize it because you're probably good at memorization. Oh, it wasn't that easy to derive. Every once in a while on test, I get extra bonus points if you can derive this one. Just saying. Might not this time. Okay, now we're going to solve some problems using those identities. And I'm actually going to do problem 24 with the identities, and I'm going to do it without the identities using another method. And I'm going to let you choose which method you want to use. Okay? Problem 24. You want me to find sine. And they're telling me. That cosine theta equals negative one fourth, and they're also telling me that theta is in quadrant two. All right, so that's what I'm getting. All right, when I look at this, if they want me to find sine, and they give me cosine, the Pythagorean identity that we just looked at that involved both of those is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. I don't know what sine is. I'm looking for that. Cosine is a negative one-fourth, and I've got to square it. So sine squared plus one-sixteenth equals one. Sine squared theta equals fifteen-sixteenths. Square root both sides. And that gives me plus or minus square root of 15, and the square root of 16 is 
Now, I have not used the theta is in quadrant two. You're going to use every piece of information. So theta is in quadrant two, would sign be positive or negative? Positive. So my answer is square root of 15 over four. And that wasn't awful. There was quite a bit of algebra in that. Okay. This was using your identity. We're going to do this with what they call the triangle method. And you're going to get to vote which way you like the best. Was you all right with this method? Did you do that again if you needed to? Okay, so you might not want to watch this next one because it might be a lot worse. We'll see. Okay, I'm going to start at the end. Theta is in quadrant two, so I'm going to draw me a triangle in quadrant two. There's the ray. The triangle is the perpendicular drop to the x-axis only. They tell me that the cosine, which is x over r, is a negative one-fourth. I can find the y, so x squared is one plus y squared equals the r squared, so y squared equals 15. Square root it. So there's the square root of 15, and it's positive because it's in quadrant two. And then I can finish this off. They want me to find the sine of theta, which is y over r. All right, how many likes the identity method? Raise your hand. How many like the triangle method? You have to like one or the other. I like the triangle method. I think it's a lot easier, and that's what I would use. And it might even say when you're doing your homework, that you have to use the identity method, you don't. If you want to use the triangle method, you're welcome to. And that would be fine. And there was something I was going to point out here if so I can remember it. Oh, when I found this Y, I did show my work for that. You're going to get where you do enough of finding the R or the Y or the X that you're going to do it in your head. Okay. And this is how I would have done it. I would have said, oh, they gave me R, so I square it, that's 16. I'm going to subtract off one of the other sides squared, which was 1, so that would be 15, and I'll take the square root of it. So you're going to get where you do it in your head. You don't have to. You can always write it down, but I'm going to start doing it in my head. Okay. I always check myself, though, real quick. Square 15, square 1, add a 16, and that's the square 4. I always check it because it takes about 5 seconds. Okay, number 25, we are just going to do the triangle method. Just the triangle method. And they give me secret theta is 2. And theta is in quadrant 4. And they're wanting me to find sine theta. All right, theta is in quadrant 4. There's my triangle. Make sure that that's a perpendicular. I have seen pictures. Students draw that looks nothing like the right triangle. All right, the secant is R over X. So this is two, this is one. And this is going to be a negative. All right, if I square the R, I get four. I square the X, I get one. Subtract them is three, take the square root. So this should be a negative square root of. Three. Certainly do x squared plus y squared equals r squared if you need to. I'm double checking myself. That squared's one, that squared's three, add them together is four, and that's my r squared. Okay. Last but not least on that problem, sine theta is y over r, so that would be a negative square root of three over two. Okay. So you try on the bottom works exactly the same. So we're going to go to the next lesson. You've got a, enough examples there that you should be fine. Now we have really been utilizing that X line R, haven't we? We're going to make sure you still remember Chief Sophie Tola though because that's what this top part here actually uses. 
You want to use the X line R if you've got quadrinals, 0.9800270, or if your triangle is drawn on the X Y axis in standard position. When you look at that, remember if a triangle is drawn in standard position, your right angle has to be on the horizontal line. It's not, is it? So that's not in standard position. You will not use X Y R on that. You're going to have to use chief Sokotoa. So let me draw my triangle. Okay, they labeled these A, B, C. Okay, so one thing here says to go find, go through and find the sine of A, cosine of A, and tan of A. And they could have asked the reciprocals. You just flip these over, and then they're going to ask for the same thing, but it's going to be of angle B. This is kind of a turnaround. Y'all have the worksheets, and I don't, and I have to write it. Okay. This is your angle A that I'm dealing with to start off with. This is going to be your hypotenuse on both of them because it's across from the 90 angle. But if I'm using angle A, this is opposite, and this is adjacent. That's what happens if you're using angle A. And that's what I have on the first. So what's the sign of A? 5 over 13. What's the cosine of A? 12 over 13. Perfect. And tan of A. So that's really just a review from last week. Now, if I use angle B, I really need another quality. If I use angle B, this is now opposite, and this is adjacent. Okay, so what will be the sign? 12 thirteenths. What will be the cosine? And the tan? And that's all they wanted. Okay, the next little bit you actually did in your geometry, whatever grade that was in. Ninth grade. I don't know. And what we're going to do first is there's some triangles that you're going to draw. And by the way, this is probably going to be the hardest thing to do today. Okay, so, it's not bad, but it probably is the hardest thing to do. I want you to draw a 45 degree triangle, and I'm talking about a sketch. And across from the 45, we don't know exactly what the length is, but we do know they're the same, so we'll call those L. And across from the 90 is the L square root of 2. And then you've got, and I'm actually going to draw, I'll just draw one triangle for this. It's a 30, 60, 90. It does not matter which one that you make the 30, which one you make the 60. But across from the 30 is going to be L. Across from the 90 is going to be 2L. That's the longest side of that triangle. And across from the 60s is going to be L square root of 3. Now you've got to memorize those. Now, usually students are okay with the 45, memorizing it. This is the one they have difficulty with. They flip-flop these two for some reason. I don't know why. If 30 is the smallest, what's smaller, L or L square root of 3? The L is smaller, so that goes across from the 30, okay? That's usually the two that's flip flop. All right, now let's look at number three. It's actually got a, a triangle 
two triangles that are drawn together, but I'm going to separate them out. I think it makes it easier to teach if I separate those two triangles out. And then they gave me, this is backwards, they gave me, this is 34, I'll get out of the way in a minute. This is 60, this is X, this is Z. Okay, so there's the two they gave me, I have pulled them apart. The only thing they have in common is the sign in the middle, and they're both X. That's the only thing they have in common. We're going to start with a triangle that the most information is given to us. Aren't we given more information on the first triangle? Okay, that's the 3069. Up here on that 3069, across from the 30 is your L. Across from the 90 is your... 2L, and across from the 60 is your L square root of 3. So if this is 2L, what will L be? 17. So that's what your Z is. All right, so what would my X be? 17 square root 3. Perfect. Okay. Now, forget this triangle. Forget it. All right, now you're looking at this triangle, which is a 45, 45, 90. So this is L, this is L, and this is L square root of 2. Our X is actually that 17 square root of 3. Well, that's what my L is. Do you see that this L is not the same as the L in the first triangle? That's why I erased it, so it go away. All right, my W then is also going to be 17 square root of 3. But I got to find this. L square root of 2. That's going to be what my Y is. That's going to be 17 square root of 3 times the square root of 2, which is 17 square root of 6. That would be my Y. Do you remember doing that in your geometry? Maybe. Okay, number 4. You know what? I don't know how to do that. Stress and stuff not working. But I didn't give up. I almost cried, but it wouldn't have done any good. Okay, looking at this. This one, the second one, gives me the most information this time. It's the 45-45-90. So this is L, this is L, and this is L square root of 2. So my D is going to be 14, and my B is going to be 14 square root of 2. 14 square root of 2. Forget that triangle, okay? The B is the same on the other one, and it was 14 square root of 2. Now I'm dealing with a 30, 60, 90. Now you could have had another 45, 45, 90 to deal with. I mean, it doesn't have to be one of each. All right, across from the 60, which is this, is your L square root of 3. Across from the 30 is your L. Across from the 90 is your 2 L. So solving this for L, and rationalize, now I think I did see on your homework where you might actually be able to reduce the numbers on the outside, and you would need to do that. I think I saw one like that in your homework. This wouldn't reduce. Or if that was L, that was actually your letter C. All right, A is going to be two times that. So 
So what is that? 28, 12, wait, 6, 6. You can only multiply what's out from under the radical. Six over three, and that looks like And that is your Okay. I want to move on down to the C. I worked a couple that that was enough that you could be able to have success with the other. I want to do this last chart, and I think I can do it and still get through in the right length of time. And what they're telling me to do is revise my triangles by letting L equal 1. So they're talking about these triangles here. But I'm actually going to draw this triangle again, but I'm going to have it in standard position for a 60 degree. So when I do this, I like to draw... Three triangles, so that I can have them in standard position. Now, this is saying to revise this, letting your L equal 1. So how does that affect it? This becomes just square root of 2. Both of these become 1. Now, let's talk about why you want to do that. Let's talk about it over here. If I was to take, let's say, the sine of 30, because that's what we're working up to. If I was to take the sine of 30, wouldn't it be L over 2L? Yes. And just like it happened with my quadrals, if I used 0, 5 or 10, 0, they'll reduce. And that would be 1 half. So that's why they're saying let your L be 1. So now you know why. I'm kind of big on you knowing why. And then this last one, the same thing. So now you've got those revised triangles. So let's fill out this chart. You know, 1 plus 1 equals 2 is your basics of arithmetic. These are your basic facts for trig. And we're going to do the 30. And we're going to go through and do all of our trig functions. Make sure I put them in the same order. That could be confusing, couldn't it? Okay, now it's going to go quick. 30 degrees, that's the middle triangle. Remember your horizontal line, because this is in standard position, is x, the vertical is y, this is your hypotenuse. So what is the sign? One half. So cosecant would be. What is my cosine? X over R. Good. And the reciprocal secant would be 2 square root of 3 over 3. Tan is Y over X. That would be 1 over square root of 3, which you rationalize as square root of 3 over 3. And my cotan would be? Square root of 3. Or right, I can do the same thing for 45, but I'm going to use the first triangle. All right, what is the sign of 45? Square root of 2 over 2. So the cosecant would be cosine is square root of 2 over 2. So secant would be Tan is, so cotan is, last but not least, 60 degrees. You're using the last triangle now. What's the sign? Good. And the cosecant? Cosine?
What have? Seek it. Tam. And Tam. So you got to know these. It would be easier for me to learn those three triangles and then get all of these based off of it. So that's how I would do it. Now, some of you, I think you two especially, and there may have been others, y'all had some experience in the trig in high school, it sounds like. All right, you may have learned these, and the rest of you too, using the unit circle. If you had trig in high school, did you learn it with a unit circle? If you, don't know what, if, you, if you don't know what I'm saying, you didn't learn it that way. Okay, I don't care if you do the unit circle. That was a lot of just pure memorization just for the sake of memorizing. I like to base it on something. And I do talk to my other cohorts that teach some of the upper maths here. They use the triangles. So that's what I'm going to use. So if you go into Cal 1, Cal 2, Cal 3, you will have used the same thing there that you use here. So that would be good. Now, I didn't get all the way through, but we did pretty good considering. Although, now the rest of this, you should be able to do this. I'm not going to do these because that's all review of everything we've done. So we will start up here on Thursday. Thank you for your patience. Y'all were a good crowd. You didn't throw tomatoes at me. Hey, Miss Ashmore, what did you say about Thursday? My computer cut out. You scared me. <laughs> Thursday, we're starting 2.2. 2.2. You missed a and, lot. Uh, <laughs> the rest of what yeah. we did today was review from what we did today. It was just practice. So we'll start on 2.2 Thursday. Hey, Miss Ashmore, if I'm having kind of a rough time with everything, where would you recommend I start? By learning these cosine secant? the definitions of all this stuff like what it translates to or if you don't know what it, what tan sine cosine those are in terms of x y and r you're in trouble so you gotta learn that first yes ma'am so that's a so learn my sine cosine tangent that's a good start and all that yes okay yes ma'am thank you um if you need to come see me why don't you come before class a little bit early and we'll look at it together Thank you so much. You're welcome. Somebody else came in today, didn't they?